risk management in financial institutions. We all know that financial institutions exist to improve the efficiency of the financial markets. In this lesson, we will learn the risk management in banks, Basel I norms and Basel II norms, the different pillars of Basel norms. After going through this presentation, you should be able to explain Basel norms, define the products of Basel committee, describe the three pillars of Basel III, analyze pillar 1, understand pillar 2 and pillar 3. The Basel Accords are some of the most influential and misunderstood agreements in modern international finance. A full understanding of the rules, intentions and shortcomings of Basel 1 and 2 is essential for assessing their impact on the international financial system. The objectives of Basel norms continue to promote safety and soundness in the financial system to ensure capital adequacy is sensitive to the level of risk borne by banks to constitute a more comprehensive approach to addressing risks and to continue to enhance competitive equality. Basel I and Basel II is the product of Basel Committee. Basel I was in effect since 1988. It is a very simple in application and easy to achieve significant capital reduction with little or no risk transfer. Basel II was introduced to combat regulatory arbitrage, exploit and improve bank and risk management systems. Basel consists of three pillars. First pillar is minimum capital. Second pillar is supervisory review. And third pillar is market discipline. Basel II treats exposures very unequally depending on exposure characteristics and also treats banks very unequally depending on sophistication of risk management systems. Basel I's adaptation and implementation occurred rather smoothly in the Basel Committee states. Three pillars of Basel II are First is a minimum capital charge. Minimum capital requirements based on market credit and operational risk to reduce risk of failure by cushioning against losses and to provide continuing access to financial markets to meet liquidity needs and also provide incentives for prudent risk management. It is an advanced method for capital allocation. Second is supervisory review. Focus on internal capabilities and review banks internal assessment and strategies. In supervisory review, qualitative supervision by regulators of internal bank risk control and capital assessment process, including supervisory power to require banks to hold more capital than required under the first pillar. Third is market discipline. New public disclosure requirements to compel improved bank risk management. Credit risk is related to default or delay. Liquidity risk related to inability to meet committed payments, inability to exit an investment. Interest rate risk is related to change in the market rate causing income variability. Exchange rate risk is related to fluctuation in currency rates, prices becoming adverse for the company. Market risk is related to interplay of, of above on trading profits and operational risk is related to failure of men machine, monitoring and methods. Basel II extends its scope into the assessment of and protection against operational risks. In sum, a bank's needed reserves for capital adequacy is calculated as follows. Reserves equals to 0 0.08 into risk weighted assets plus operational risk reserves plus market risk reserves. Pillars 2 and 3 are much less complex and lengthy than Pillar 1. In Pillar 2, banks must attain solvency relative to their risk profile. Supervisors should review each bank's own risk assessment and capital strategies. Banks should maintain excess of minimum capital. Regulators would intervene at an early stage. Possibility of rewarding banks with better risk management systems. 
and RBI has already taken steps to conduct supervisory review. Pillar 3 wants to increase market discipline within a country's banking sector. Basel 2 hopes to empower shareholders to enforce discipline in the risk-taking and reserve-holding methods of banks, where banks are seen to hold few reserves and take on too much risk, are punished by their own shareholders for doing so. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. In Basel Committee, there are 11 numbers of nations. Right or wrong? Right. The Basel I Accord divides itself into eight pillars. Right or wrong? Wrong. The second pillar of Basel II is related to minimum capital requirements. Right or wrong? Wrong. The pillar 3 of Basel II looks to increase market discipline within a country's banking sector. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied so far. Basel Committee, it is a group of 11 nations that, after the messy 1974 liquidation of the Cologne-based bank Herstatt, decided to form a cooperative council to harmonize banking standards and regulations within and between all member states. Basel I was created to promote the harmonization of regulatory and capital adequacy standards only within the member states of the Basel Committee. The first internal ratings-based approach is known as the Foundation IRP. Basel II has three pillars. First pillar is minimum capital. Second pillar is supervisory review. And third pillar is market discipline. In this approach, banks with the approval of regulators can develop probability of default models that provide in-house risk weightings for their loan books.